please give a nice warm welcome to Wayne LaPierre. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Leader, I want to thank you so much for the introduction, for your leadership, what you do every day fighting for freedom. I also want to thank Tom King, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association. You do an amazing job, Tom. I don't know where you are, but thank you. Also, all of you, so many of you are NRA members, and I say every day, everything we do at the NRA is just people one by one that make it work. That's the key to the whole organization. We're about our membership. We're about giving voice to our membership. When I look at the NRA, we're about freedom, citizenship, patriotism. We're about core American values. That's what we're about. When I see an NRA hat like this one right here, I immediately feel a bond to the fabric that keeps us free in this country. When I look at our country, we as Americans, we breathe freer air. We live freer lives. We have more opportunity from the day we're born than anyone else on the planet. Other countries have tried to copy us. No one's really been able to duplicate us. It's because of those freedoms we have in our Bill of Rights and in our Constitution. I can't tell you how many times I heard Charlton Heston say that our Constitution provides for speech and religion, all our other freedoms. But he always said the doorway to the freedom is framed with a musket that first defended it at Concord Bridge. And that's really true. It, uh, and we have to go out every day and still defend those freedoms because they're just words on a piece of parchment paper unless we go out and defend them. When you look at what we're about, so much of it, let's talk self-defense. It's constitutional. But my gosh, it's also biblical. I mean, it's like water quenches your thirst. Food calms your hunger. With a firearm, you can protect yourself, your families, from those that would do evil. It goes back to the very beginning of, of, of culture. The Greeks, the Romans, Confucius. Christian scholars said it's God's natural law inscribed in every human heart. Jewish scholars supported it. Our founding fathers put it in the Constitution, and it was fought for by American blacks after the Civil War. The, the only people that don't get it are the elites. They want it for themselves, but they want it to deny it to all the rest of the citizens in this country. But the good news is we're the majority. We've gone through nationwide, if you look at our country, a phenomenal restoration of freedom in this country, Second Amendment freedom. We, as we stand here today, almost every state has range protection laws, hunter harassment laws, a pass-through provision where you can, if you're legal where you start out, legal where you end up, you can travel in this country. We passed the mcclure volkmer bill, completely rewriting that whole gun control act. We have 41 states now with shell issue right to carry laws, and it's a huge success in this country. And we saved the American firearms industry from all those nuisance lawsuits where they were trying to drive every American firearms manufacturer out of business. We We've armed our nation airlines pilots, and that makes the skies safer. And it culminated in the Heller and the McDonald case, saying that the Second Amendment, you already knew it, but the Supreme Court said it very clearly. It's your individual right, regardless of where you live in this country. <laughs> Through the great programs that you've all support and helped fund it, do you know we have child accidents down to the lowest level ever in this country? A child today growing up has one-tenth the chance of being involved in a firearms accident that his or her parents did. That's because of you, this Eddie Eagle Child Safety Program. We have put millions of dollars into it. 
The people that criticize us, they haven't put 10 cents into making kids safe. We've funded it and we've made that progress possible, all of you. And you know, the shooting sports, let's talk about that for a minute. There is American is playing catch. Before there was baseball, before there was football in this country, Americans always participated in the shooting sports as part of an American good time. There are 30 to 40 million people in this country that go out and participate in the shooting sports. They teach safety, they teach discipline, they teach, teach responsibility. There's one of the safest sports out there. And we're not going to allow them to be stigmatized and put into the shadows. I promise you that. I want. We want more American families out shooting, more ranges, more people enjoying an American good time, more people participate right now than golf, tennis, skiing. And it's a great sport, and we're proud of it. Let me also talk for just a minute about the threats that we're facing. We face in this country threat from a group of elites that it's almost gotten to the point where they think the heck with the Constitution, the heck with the law, what I say is the way it's going to be. And we see that on so many aspects of our public life today. So many uh, enforcing the law at the border prosecutions of criminals that ought to be prosecuted and aren't. But let me tell you how it plays out for gun owners. The Heller case, the Supreme Court says, if you live in Washington, D.C., you have a constitutional right to own a gun. And the D.C. City Council says, ha, huh, we'll see about that. In New Orleans, after Hurricane Katrina, where they went into people's homes, illegally confiscated their firearms, federal court said you had no right to do it, give them back. And the New Orleans mayor said, that's not going to happen. And in Chicago, after the McDonald case, where the Supreme Court said, if you have a right to own a gun, any block you live, anywhere in the country, in any block in Chicago, and the mayor and the city council said, we don't like it, so you're not going to practice it. As if their opinion trumped the Constitution, as if their opinion trumped individual freedom. There's nothing about the authority of a mayor that gives him a supersized authority to throw the Constitution out the window. Supreme Court decisions have to have consequences. An incorporated freedom has to be a real freedom. Otherwise, they're simply toothless decrees and the entire premise of American constitutional authority collapses. If you're rich and famous in New York City, and all of us know this, you get your permit. If you're a celebrity, a Wall Street executive, a banker, friend of the mayor, you get your permit. And yet the honest citizen, you're flat out of luck. Well, this is all about the non-celebrity, the non-titan of industry, the non-friend of Mayor Bloomberg, the non-celebrity in New York City. It's all about your right to be safe, and we're never going to give up on it. And that's never been more important, especially here in New York State. You know, this state has consistently led the nation in releasing inmates from prison and having them put back in prison again. Law enforcement budgets have been slashed, prison funding's been cut, and make no mistake, more violent criminals are about to get out of jail and go free. What the elites will do is try to use the crimes that they commit as an argument to leave all of you defenseless. And we can't let that happen. To, $2.5 million times a year in this country, honest people use a gun to defend themselves from some criminal that ought to be in jail and is out walking the street. There are 25,000 violent crimes a week in this country. At the scene of the crime, it's the criminal and the victim. Nobody else is there despite all their good intentions. The Second Amendment has never been more relevant than it is today. All those crime victims, and I've spent 20, 30 years talking to them, at the time of their impending death, when they're attacked by a criminal, 
they all say either I wish I had a gun or I'm glad I did have a gun because I was able to save my life. You know, this may come to a shock uh, to some of the elites in this building. I'm not talking about these great leaders we have behind us that stand up for freedom every day. But yeah, let's give them a hand. But most New Yorkers agree with the NRA a heck of a lot more than those elites I'm talking about. You know, I, I was coming up here and, you know, I read the Times Union, I read the New York Times. I know you get lectured every other day in editorials in there, telling you that you're the minority and, and this is the way it needs to be. So I commissioned a poll by John Zogby, one of the top Democratic pollsters in the country, on where the citizens of New York State actually stand. Listen to this. We, all of you, NRA, all of these assemblymen and senators behind me, we believe there are enough laws on the books and that government should enforce the current laws that require jail time for criminals with guns. And guess what? Wait a minute. And guess what? By a two to one margin, New Yorkers statewide agree with us. Again, this is all from a brand new poll just off the presses by Zogby. Anybody doubts it, go to him. We believe the Second Amendment protects an individual right to own a firearm for personal protection. And guess what? So do two-thirds of your fellow New York State residents. Listen to this one. We fight for the rights of law-abiding citizens to carry a firearm on their person or in their cars for personal protection. Listen to this one and guess what? Two thirds of New Yorkers support that too. And we're fighting right now in Congress to pass reciprocity legislation that would allow a concealed carry permit holder from one state to carry it in another. And guess what? New Yorkers agree with that idea too, by a majority. But here's the real kicker, and let me know what you think about this one. See if you agree with the 60% of voters in this state who believe the following, that government has become so large and powerful that it poses an immediate threat to the rights and freedoms of ordinary American citizens. You see, most New Yorkers and most Americans agree with you and me. They're sick and tired of big government sticking its nose into their lives everywhere they turn. So as I look out of all of you, you are the majority, and don't ever forget it. Not only in America, but right here in New York State. And the majority needs to stand up and assert itself. Because our soul, our values, and all the rights we've worked so hard to defend, all of what we know is good and right about America, could be lost unless we all remain vigilant. The President's already appointed two justices to the U.S. Supreme Court. And when given the chance, President Obama, he jumped to put Sonia Sotomayor and Elena Kagan on the court. They are two of the most rabidly anti-Second Amendment justices in U.S. history. They've joined Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the court. Remember her? not long after hugging President Obama like a giddy schoolgirl at the State of the Union address, she said this, and let me quote her, I would not look to the U.S. Constitution if I were drafting a Constitution in the year 2012. I might look to the Constitution of South Africa. Think about that. I would not look to the U.S. Constitution if I were drafting a Constitution in 2012. 
I would look to the Constitution of South Africa? What about our oath of office to uphold our Constitution? If the president gets two or three appointments after this election on the court, the Second Amendment as an individual right in this country will be gone forever in our lifetime, and that is a fact, and we can't let it happen. Let me also tell you about another fact, fast and furious. Yeah, you know, we were never supposed to find out about it. They wanted to create the appearances that straw purchases in the U.S. caused Mexico's drug war. So what happened is the Justice Department and BATF conspired in secret to allow, encourage, and engage in illegal gun smuggling, knowing full well that those thousands of guns were headed straight to the most evil people on the planet, the Mexican drug cartels. They ran a massive campaign to manipulate public opinion in this country with this whole 90% nonsense that was never true. We're one of the largest law enforcement organizations in the United States in terms of membership. We have 80,000 police officer members of the NRA. They all said they're not coming from the U.S. International black market, Central America, defections from the Mexican army, not from the U.S. And they were also slandering the reputation of honest gun dealers when they knew the truth. It's the type of thing you'd expect out of some South American dictatorship, not a U.S. Attorney General, and sure not a U.S. President. In effect, they set up a dealership. In effect, they set up an illegal pipeline and sent thousands and thousands of guns down there. Lost track of all of them over a period of years. There were no prosecutions. I mean, it was unbelievable what went on. And then when it started to leak out, they started to say ridiculous things like mumbling about, well, in order to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs. Those eggs were innocent human beings. Agent Brian Terry, federal agent, was one of those eggs. That can't be a metaphor that works. We can't let that stand. They crossed the line, and we need to hold them responsible. And Congress right now is trying to investigate this, but all they're getting is pages and pages and pages of redacted material. Now, you've got to assume the White House gave the okay for that cover-up. And underneath all those pages, it's now well known that what's there is proof that the largest smuggler into the Mexican drug cartels was our own Justice Department. The consequences of that is people are going to be dying for the next 20 years by the cartels hurting people with the firearms that our own government supplied to the Mexican cartels. And just as indefensible, they were ruining the lives of honest American gun dealers and citizens and blaming them when they knew the truth. They ordered them to make every one of those sales and that's why the sales were made. They didn't even want to make them. I mean, just think about that. And then when the truth starts coming out, what you get is a massive cover-up out of this administration, out of this Justice Department. Cover-up's a crime. Remember that? We can't let that stand. They concocted a scheme to make what was not true appear to be true in order to pass more gun control laws on the American public. After, if you're saying that guns are coming from U.S. gun stores and going to the cartels, and you're saying it like a barbershop quartet with Obama and Vice President Biden and Attorney General Eric Holder and Hillary Clinton, you better have guns flowing from the U.S. to Mexico. And that's exactly what they did. The sad thing is, after all said and done, they're left with thousands and thousands of guns in the hands of the Mexican drug cartels. And we were never even supposed to know about it until federal agent Brian Terry was killed with those guns. And the agents down the line could no longer stand the stench of what was coming out in Washington. A lot of them were NRA members. And they started speaking out and ratting out the administration on what was going on. 
And now, yeah, God bless him is right. But now, rather than get the truth out of this administration, all you get, it's like pulling teeth trying to get the truth. All you get is this cloudy cover-up. And then when the Attorney General is put under oath and asked about what's going on before Congress, he still tries to blame the Second Amendment and all of us law-abiding people in this country, as opposed to the Mexican drug cartels. It's so upside down and backwards. As the American public, I'll tell you this, they are choking on it nationwide. president has two choices. He can either participate in a cover-up or he can order his administration to reveal everything and tell the truth. But I'll tell you this, we need a special prosecutor to look into this. It's the only way we're ever going to get the truth. And Attorney General Eric Holder needs to be ousted and be out of that office. If that weren't enough, all of while that's going on, the Obama administration's working behind the scenes with this whole UN plan to enact some type of treaty or international agreement to affect your freedoms here in the United States. I mean, I've been around long enough to know the UN has little regard for our Constitution and believe me, none at all for our Second Amendment. I went to New York this past summer, and I testified in front of the UN. And I, I'll tell you this, you talk about an out-of-body experience, that was it. I mean, I'm sitting there, and I'm looking out, and there's Iran sitting there looking at me, and there's Syria sitting there looking at me, and there's Cuba and Zimbabwe and all these other great bastions of freedom. And I'm sitting there going, you want to come into our country and dumb down our freedoms and infect us like a germ? I'll tell you this, there's no way, no how, whatever, we're ever going to allow you to mess with American freedom. But the president, he's, he's fooling around with it. I probably thinks he's going to get another Nobel Prize out of it. it uh, <laughs> Look, the, the UN, the whole history of the UN, it's nothing but a club of governments. We're the only country with a constitution, a bill of rights. It's just a club of governments. If you look at most of the killing that's been done, it's by governments in that club. Look at the Soviet Union, look at China, look at North Vietnam, North Korea. More recently, look at the Uganda, look at Rwanda, look at the Sudan, look at Bosnia, look at Syria right now. It's just a club of government, and they do a lousy job on coming down on one of their own when they get out of line. Our sovereign in this country is the individual. That's what we're about, a Bill of Rights and a Constitution. They're about the government. That's why their gun plan is the most extreme imaginable. Turn over all your self-protection, all your guns to the government, and the government will protect you. That's what they say. And their plan, if you look at it, it's this massive scheme of data banks, global agencies, tracking, tracing, surveillance, supervision. Nowhere is there any mention of our causes, individual freedom, a Bill of Rights, a Constitution, due process, privacy, freedom. Nowhere is there any mention of arresting, prosecuting, and incarcerating violent criminals in the UN plan. And nowhere is there any mention of how Terrorized people, oppressed people, can be freed from tyrants and dictators. And I'll tell you this, if your glass breaks at 2 a.m. at night, those baby blue helmets of the UN are sure not going to be there to save you. There's, there's not a government or an authority on the planet that when that glass breaks, substitutes for your individual right to own a firearm to protect yourself.
But there's this idea, and you see some of it going into the Obama administration, that in order to be a citizen of the world, Americans need to take a lesser amount of freedom in order to fit in. That somehow American freedom, America, needs to conform to some worldwide standard. That's a critical step down the path of losing our unique American way of life. American freedom cannot and will not bend to this will of the world that wants to impose a lesser standard of freedom on us. We will never allow that to happen. I know every one of you agree with me. We believe in the unique benefits of American freedom. We believe our freedoms make us stronger. We believe our freedoms make us better. We think our way of life is better. And we believe our Second Amendment makes us better in this country. So, this is an all-in year for our freedoms. All of our freedoms, all of our rights, all of our way of life, and all of the Second Amendment is on the line. And all means every one of you and citizens like you all throughout New York State. A hundred million American gun owners. You have a million permit holders just in this state alone. No one sits this election out. Each. Each of you today, or you wouldn't be here, have a shared lifetime of standing up and defending freedom. And each one of you, and your families, and your neighbors, and your friends, and your fellow workers, have the ability to get between those that want to take away our freedom and our freedom. You have the ability to get between them and stop it. It's time for each of us to saddle up to ride, to hang the lanterns, to be a Paul Revere. Now is our time, because we are the NRA. We are Americans. We are patriots. And when it comes to defending freedom, we are, by God, all in. Thank you very much, and let's fight for freedom every single day. Thank you very much.